Welcome, friends, once again today to our study on the book of Genesis. We're in Genesis chapter 39, where we see Joseph being tested in Potiphar's house. And uh, as we came into these verses, or began to come into these verses yesterday, we began to look at Joseph prospering as a servant in verses 1 through 6. And as we looked into those verses, we saw a couple of things yesterday in verses 1 and 2. We're going to continue to look at that today. But let me just remind you that yesterday we saw that Joseph was a man who prospered in spite of his environment. Uh, even though he was in a wicked land, he was away from his family. Uh, he still did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. And we saw that society, our upbringing is no excuse for our wrongdoing. That we must um, determine that it is us and us alone who is determining how we are going to live our lives. Joseph was a man that was forced to leave his family and forced to leave his home. But thankfully, he did not leave God. He was faithful to his God even when he was living in the home of an idolater. And we saw that God's blessings and God's grace uh, is with his people when they are under severe trial. Now, with that in mind, I want to read verses Genesis 39, verses 1 through 6 once again today. And then we'll pick up our study in verse 3. It says in Genesis 39, 1, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him. And he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had he put into his hand. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in the house, and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not aught he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. We're going to pick this up in verse 3 today, where we saw that God's blessing is something that can be observed by sinners. Notice it says there, his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. You know, People don't have to be a Christian to acknowledge God's hand upon our lives. To be, to be able to see that God is a reality, that he's not just something that we talk about, but that he is indeed one that we serve and that they can see the hand of God and the blessing of God upon our lives. And notice how he responded to that in verse 4. It says, Joseph found grace in his sight, that is Joseph's sight, or uh, Potiphar's sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had he put into his hand. Notice it says he served him, and he had him, made him overseer over his house. Joseph, a man that was sold into slavery, did not pout about where he was. He did not take out his hurt feelings by being a very poor laborer for Potiphar. Rather, we see here that Joseph sought to honor the Lord even in this situation, and he worked diligently. As a matter of fact, he worked so well that the scriptures say that he was promoted to overseer of Potiphar's house. This promotion says that Joseph not only worked well, but also worked better than all of the other slaves that were in Potiphar's house, and he displayed a better character than the other, other slaves in Potiphar's house. And, you know, we know that because Joseph would have had to have been a man that would show much integrity to be put in charge of Potiphar's house and trusted with all that Potiphar had, as we're going to see later in this passage. And the Bible says in this that his master saw that the Lord was with him. Though he, was slave, though he was a slave, Joseph lived his life in such a way that it was evident that God was with him. And you know, friends, if we want to be a good witness for the Lord, we cannot be slack in our performance. 
Those who claim to be Christians but perform poorly on the job um, will not be a good witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter how many tracts they have in their pocket. It doesn't matter um, whether or not they carry a Bible in their lunch pail or whether or not they wear a t-shirt that says, I love Jesus. If they are slack in their job, they are not going to represent him well and they're not going to show the world what a Christian really is. So we see here that God's blessing here in these verses can be observed by sinners and that he saw that God was with him. Joseph's master was well pleased with him. And as we think about Joseph being a type of the Lord Jesus Christ, the father also was pleased with the Lord Jesus Christ. There were a number of times in the Gospels, once at the baptism of Jesus and any other time at the transfiguration, where it says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Jo uh, Jesus also was able to say, and I hope that it's our, our heart's desire as well, he was able to say in John 8, 29, I do always those things that please him. What a testimony for us to be able to say that I always do those things that please the Lord. And then God blesses others for the sake of his people. Notice verse 5. It says, It came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. You know, the key to the well-being of Potiphar's household was the presence of a godly man named Joseph. And the truth is that the key to the well-being of any society is the presence of godly people in that society. Godly people are worth more to a nation than any other resource that nation has. They are worth more to a nation than any might that that nation has. They are more to a nation and worth more to a nation than any natural things that that nation may have. And uh, Potiphar lost his divine blessing in this chapter when he failed to support the godly man Joseph. Potiphar allowed his house to mistreat or his wife rather to mistreat the godly Joseph and Joseph was removed from Potiphar's house. Friends, the lesson we learn from that is this societies, nations, businesses, and church churches make a great mistake when they do not honor and protect the godly. In verse 5, Joseph was made a blessing to others. And so, in being an example of the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ is made a blessing to all who have him in their house. Egypt is a type of the world, and they were blessed because of Joseph. I want you to think of how the world has been blessed because of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, then also, notice in verse 6, it says there, he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not aught that he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. Joseph was a goodly person. And of course, we know that Christ was the greatest person of all. Um, Potiphar himself said when Jesus was being crucified, I find no blame in him. I find no blemish in him. There's nothing worthy of crucifixion in him. Now, as we close our study out today in looking at Joseph prospering as a servant, uh, let me just remind you that, that God is continuing to work out his plans, even when it seems like his plans are failing. Things are going to go south here very quickly for Joseph. But I want you to understand that even in the bad times, friends, God is still working out his plans. Let me just fast forward and read a couple of verses for you in Genesis 45 as we close today. Genesis chapter 45. And verse 5 says, Now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that ye, that notice this, that ye sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. You see what he says there? I underline these words in my Bible. It says, Ye sold me, God sent me. From the human perspective, it was his brothers that sold him to Egypt. From God's perspective, God sent him ahead to preserve the Israelite people. Then in verse 7 of Genesis 45, it says, God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. 
And uh, friends, we need to trust God and allow him to work in each and every situation of our lives. Have a great day.